Ritual Now, a religious or solemn ceremony consisting of a series of actions performed according to a prescribed order. All right, now, we have rituals year-round, but the winter is ritual central, intentionally. The cold of European winters are the impetus for the festival that eventually became Christmas. The church moved the celebration of the birth of Christ to the winter to piggyback off of an already existing and necessary ritual when it started moving east, okay? Now, the ritual for many is the key to breaking the winter blues. Ritual is a mood booster. It's crucial in cold, cruel worlds, and the world is never colder or crueler than in the winter. In the United States, where church and state are separate, but our money says in God we trust, we take our corporate rituals to heart. Some of our biggest rituals, Christmas, Super Bowl, Valentine's Day, are now inextricably tied into our national past passion for consumerism. These days help us mark time and American business set sales projections. We openly talk about part of the ritual being able to view the non- we openly talk about part of the ritual being able to view the new corporate art meant to sell us stuff. I've got products I want to sell, art I use to sell it with, and I want for you to have a ritual to give me your money um, annually and your attention. I realize it would be asking too much if I thought we could separate ourselves from these corporate rituals, but we have to at least make sure our rituals aren't only corporate ones. Even the ritual of football itself is understandable. For many boys, it's their path into manhood. Their lessons on teamwork and perseverance. Football is the chance for young men to use and push their bodies, something every growing person needs. There are generations of American boys who grow nostalgic around all the sights and smells and emotions that go with football. The tart sweet smell of fresh cut grass, the funk of the inside of your helmet, the laps chanting and panting with your teammates, the huddles, the orange slices, the screaming parents, the mud kicked into your cleats, the pregame and halftime speeches, the run through the tunnel and breaking through the banner to screaming fans, the coin toss, the kickoff. Even as fans, we have our ritual. We know when to cheer, we know what food to expect, we know what friends and family we will see for the first time in a long time, when our team is having its big game when the Super Bowl is on. We know who has what seats on the sofa and the big comfy chair. If we were anywhere else in the world, our passion would be football, or what we call soccer. Or if we were in another time period, it would have been lacrosse, or wrestling, or jousting. The culture around the sport pervades our language and our memories. Its highlight moments are, our, its highlight moments are frozen in time for us. It is almost impossible to expect us to break from such an ingrained aspect of our society the way some people, including myself, think we should. But if it's too much to break this time-honored tradition, let's at least make sure we are celebrating non-corporate and pro-community rituals that we have already, that we have always celebrated or that we are now creating. I want to give a shout out to my man Diallo Summary and the family at Adinkra Culture Art Studio starting a new ritual, um, that hopefully a ritual that I will be performing in soon, that I'll be taking part in soon, and that's doing this festival in Accra, Ghana, this month with the Backyard Band. Combining the ritual of African drumming with the ritual of DC go-go music and this new ritual of visiting where we come from. I'm starting to raise the funds now so I can take my family on the same trip next year and make it an annual thing. I also want to shout out Erica Bridgeford and the whole Baltimore ceasefire movement. There are way too many of y'all to shout out, all right? But who take the time to make a city numb from drugs and violence aware of itself every time they memorialize a lost soul to violence with a sacred space or have one of their inspiring ceasefire weekends. Congratulations to Baltimore for no murders this weekend, the second stretch of at least that long this year. We are not going to be numb. We are going to keep educating, healing, and loving each other. We're also about to take part in another ancient black ritual, the black movie. I remember how we came out for Spike Lee movies, Eddie Murphy movies, Denzel and Wesley Snipe movies, even the Morgan Freeman movies of the 80s and 90s. Our desire to break through the cold, cool representation of us in corporate media has us coming out in droves. I don't want to end that ritual. I am planning my Black Panther outfit, and I've got my whole family tickets to a private screening. But I want to make sure that I'm also putting as much energy into my community's 50th anniversary Kwanzaa celebration or my friends' and former students' albums and short films. We need to create the same sense of urgency and ritual around those. Now, last year's Super Bowl was the last one I'll probably ever watch on purpose. I fell asleep at halftime at, of the greatest Super Bowl comeback in history to this day. I haven't felt a moment of regret. I'm avoiding explaining my politics around the NFL in this piece because that is not the point I'm trying to make. The Super Bowl might 
That Super Bowl night was the first time in a long time I was with my two closest friends, Everett and Sasha, basically my brothers since the 10th grade and the 5th grade, respectively. We all have more children and more responsibilities than we have time, but we made the time to try to observe this American ritual. It was great seeing them. It broke me out of my winter funk I was in at the time, and evidently it gave me a chance to catch up on some much needed sleep. Getting together with my brothers is the human part of that corporate ritual I want to keep and expand on and make into a ritual of its own. That's all, guys. Uh, 